Okay, Anita. Um... Okay, I hope the network permits because I've been struggling <laughs> since. <laughs> no All right. I think it's working now. <laughs> yes, so far. Thank God for that. <laughs> Yes, um, our next section is going to be focused on web assembly, web assembly based AI as a service um, with Kubernetes. And this will be taken by Shiva Lamba and Rashid Dagley. So, um, Rashid Dagley is a, a high school student from Mumbai, India, and loves working on machine learning, especially computer vision and Kubernetes, and you can always catch um, Rashid working with Android. He is an active contributor of multiple open source projects like um, TensorFlow, Kubeflow, and Kubernetes. Um, while Shiva Lamba is a software developer specializing in DevOps, machine learning, and full stack development, also an open source enthusiast that has been a part of various programs such as Google Code and um, Google Summer of Code as a mentor and is currently um, in the MLH Fellowship. And um, over to you both. Welcome, Welcome to our, our talk, talk at KCI Africa. Africa. I'm Shivai with my friend Rashid. And the topic for our talk is WebAssembly-based AI as a service with Kubernetes. A very quick introduction about myself. I'm Shivai, a developer advocate at Millisoft, and I'm also a contributor at Layer 5, which is part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Over to you, Rashid. Uh, hi, I'm Rashid. I'm a high school student, uh, and I'm an incoming student at the University of Toronto. I contribute to maintain and create multiple uh, open source projects, uh, mainly in the machine learning ecosystem. Well, talking about machine learning, the first thing I'd like to touch upon is why to choose Rust over Python in machine learning. Now, of course, we know that worldwide Python is by far the most popular language when it comes to creating, uh, doing machine learning inference. Uh, but there are a few reasons why you should actually choose Rust over Python. One of the biggest ones is in terms of performance. Now, Rust uh, can be actually directly compiled into machine code, and there's no need for, let's say, a virtual machine or an interpreter. Uh, that is actually usually the case with uh, Python. And one of the other really big advantages is uh, in terms of the thread and memory management. Now, uh, you must be very aware of the uh, Python global interpreter lock issue that is uh, that still sort of uh, plagues uh, Python. And while Rust doesn't have, let's say, the necessary garbage collection like in Python, but the compiler in Rust still enforces some invalid memory reference leaks as well. But these uh, advantages are much better in comparison to Python. And as a matter of fact, according to a study by IBM, uh, which highlights that how Rust and WebAssembly can actually gain 12 to 15 times performance in comparison to Node.js, and a more than 25% times increase in performance as compared to Python. Uh, so that just goes on to show why you can actually choose uh, Rust over Python, uh, especially in machine learning use cases. And that sort of brings us to WebAssembly, how WebAssembly actually comes into picture. Well, WebAssembly is a compiled target that essentially allows you to uh, run these executables at native speed and also in very small containers. And these are portable. That means that they can actually be run anywhere. So you just have to uh, use, let's say, some of, some of your high, uh, highly computational languages such as C++ or Rust and uh, have WebAssembly as a compilation target. And these are portable in nature. That means you just have to generate them once and these can be executed anywhere uh, without having to redeploy them again and again. And also you can use some scripting languages like, C, uh, like JavaScript or Python also to compile them into uh, an WebAssembly executable. And the biggest factor also being that since uh, WebAssembly is a binary instruction format that allows you for uh, near native decoding, that means it is much more faster as compared to other competitive runtimes. And this also, like, you know, then specifically means that when it comes to machine learning, uh, WebAssembly is a really great way to do machine learning inference as well. And uh, coming to uh, how you can actually use WebAssembly within the ecosystem for cloud native. So when WebAssembly is expanding within uh, cloud native as well, especially uh, because uh, CNCF has a lot of different uh, sandbox projects today incubated, such as the Wasm Edge, Wasm Cloud. Uh, speaking specifically about Wasm Edge, uh, it is a light a runtime, uh, WebAssembly runtime, uh, mainly used for cloud native and also edge-based applications. And Wasm Edge truly helps you bring WebAssembly to the edge. 
because Wasm Edge allows you to enable serverless functions, which we'll be talking about in a bit, that allow you to run WebAssembly uh, use cases on Edge devices. And according to Mortius Capian from the University of Tilburg, uh, uh, actually published an article where he compares the compa uh, comparison of uh, running WebAssembly um, and actually doing machine learning inference as compared to Docker. And uh, by actually comparing the inference time that actually took between both WebAssembly and Docker, there was uh, an improvement of more than five to 10 times uh, for the machine learning inference in terms of performance, while also the machine learning containers being smaller as compared to Docker co containers. Now, one of the reasons why we should actually use WebAssembly also for serverless. So first of all, you must be aware that today's serverless computing is uh, like, you know, gaining a lot of popularity, especially with a lot of different tools, such as uh, edge functions being provided by all major cloud providers like uh, AWS Lambda, or even like, you know, uh, Netlify or Vercel providing Vercel, fun uh, Vercel, Vercel uh, functions. And these edge functions allow uh, a completely new dimension to uh, serverless computing. And uh, there's some really great reasons why you should actually use WebAssembly uh, as well uh, for uh, these uh, serverless functions. So first of all, uh, you can actually uh, write highly performance functions in uh, languages such as C and Rust, and these can be directly compiled into WebAssembly. And these WebAssembly functions are actually much more quicker as compared to JavaScript or Python, which are commonly used as serverless functions, for example, in AWS Lambda. There are some other uh, benefits as well when using WebAssembly. One of the biggest ones being that, uh, as we mentioned, that the bytecode for WebAssembly is actually portable. So that means that if you are actually using WebAssembly-based uh, function or like let's say function as service, uh, you just have to uh, deploy it once and you can actually then go ahead and use these serverless uh, functions anywhere and then actually run them anywhere in any kind of a cloud environment without having to redeploy them again and again. Also, uh, at the same time, uh, the deployment, as we mentioned, uh, deployment of WebAssembly applications is very simple. Uh, there are a lot less platform dependencies that are required to actually uh, be used alongside these WebAssembly applications as compared to, let's say, uh, JavaScript or Python-based serverless functions. So that makes it very easy to actually just work with these WebAssembly-based applications. And with Wasm Edge, uh, we also expand the WebAssembly security model. So you must all be aware that WebAssembly uh, uh, security is very well known as compared to other containers because WebAssembly itself cannot really do anything uh, it, it, within the sandbox environment. In case you want it to interact with, let's say, the uh, file system, you need to use WASI, and this makes it a very safe environment. So you can basically use that security model uh, as well um, uh, alongside uh, the serverless functions. So for example, if you were to do AI inference uh, function as a service, that uh, can be first of all, very secure and also run at full native speed because of the fact that we are getting that uh, native performance with the help of a WebAssembly executable. So those are some of the reasons why WebAssembly is preferred, uh, especially for function as a service. And uh, this particular site sort of showcases the benchmark that we ran uh, for one of the most popular machine learning models, which is the mobile net V2. Uh, we basically ran a benchmark for doing performance comparison between uh, uh, the various runtimes, uh, including Wasmet, uh, TensorFlow Lite, uh, Wasmet with ahead of time compilation, uh, running this model in Python and in TensorFlow.js. And as you can see that uh, the least amount of time that it took for inference was with Wasm Edge with the ahead of time compilation as compared to some of the other ones as well. Uh, all these uh, uh, records were uh, in inference were done in milliseconds. So you can see that the fastest one is Wasm Edge. And uh, the text site that we're going to be using for our demo includes uh, Rust, WebAssembly, Wasm Edge, Vercel, since we'll be showing how you can actually deploy a service function onto uh, Vercel and then also with Kubernetes. So now over to the demo. Uh, we'll meet you after the demo. So now we come to the interesting part that is demos. And the first demo we'll be seeing today is uh, uh, running the machine learning inference task that is computationally intensive in WebAssembly. We'll be seeing Rust and JavaScript demos both. And at, at the moment, let's just see how to run this locally uh, in Wasm Edge. And uh, so WebAssembly, as many of you might know, started out as a JavaScript alternative for browsers and run high, uh, high performance uh, applications or high performance computations like machine learning inference with, that we'll be seeing today uh, in languages like C, C++, or Rust, safely in the browsers. So WebAssembly runs side by side with JavaScript. And uh, we'll actually need, uh, so to run JavaScript, we'll actually need an interpreter. So, uh, so a suggested interpreter and uh, something we, I've tried quite often is the QGIS, uh, uh, that allows you to, uh, the QGIS interpreter that allows you to easily use uh, JavaScript applications and is and also has really brilliant support for TensorFlow and TensorFlow-like models. 
So, uh, so before like uh, taking a look at this quick JS uh, interpreter, uh, you might think that uh, it, could it be slower than V8, and uh, uh, well, it is slower than V8 uh, because of quick JS not having uh, just in time compilation. Uh, but uh, if you if you think about it, uh, if you think about it, uh, quick JS is not only a lot smaller than V8; it's literally uh, one fortieth the size. Uh, if that's right, uh, yeah, it's one fortieth the size uh, than V8. And the second part is uh, you only want to uh, you only want to run a lot of your uh, uh, you want to run uh, you only want to run some of your code in javascript and probably call the computationally intensive tasks uh, like the uh, uh, like machine learning inference for one uh, or image processing stuff uh, that you are doing uh, you'll be calling the rust function for that uh, so uh, so you can essentially have js programs with extension apis in rust or c c++ and uh, rust with embedded javascript so that is very much possible uh, which makes with js a really nice choice for us uh, so uh, so first let's take a look at uh, building with js uh, which is uh, which you can do quite easily. Let's go to wasmh with JS, and uh, now we'll try to uh, build the with JS interpreter. So what I want to do is cargo build minus minus target uh, wasm thirty two minus wasi. So you'll also have to uh, add this target early on. I've actually installed the wasm thirty two minus wasi early on, uh, but if you don't, uh, you will need to uh, install this target early on as well. Uh, release and uh, here I'll just add that I also want TensorFlow specific features because. Uh, Will be uh, at the TensorFlow extensions because we'll be running a TensorFlow model. Uh, oh, I uh, made a typo there. Uh, okay, so I have actually built this, so it didn't take uh, quite a lot of time. But what I do want to show you is uh, let's just go to target version 32 minus was release and let's do an LS overview. So what you can see is the version edge underscore quick js dot version. So this is the JavaScript interpreter that we have. And uh, so let's now uh, go to uh, let's now go to uh, our JavaScript example. Uh, of our mobile net v2 so we'll go to js underscore mobile net v2 boards and uh, so uh, first off we'll uh, start uh, so for, uh, so now we can start using the uh, wasm edge quick js dot wasm interpreter which we just built and uh, we'll use the wasm edge minus tensorflow minus light utility that is a wasm edge built with tensorflow and tensorflow light extensions uh, and it makes uh, it really easy uh, to work with tensorflow and tensorflow light models so uh, let's do that so what we'll see is wasm edge minus tensorflow minus light and uh, now we want to mount the current directory. So uh, let's just mount the current directory first. Then we want to, uh, so now we want to tell it which interpreter do we want to use. So that is actually the one which we just built. And uh, now we'll give it the, uh, and now we'll give it the uh, JavaScript code. So let's go on to the JavaScript code, uh, which we have. And uh, uh, so uh, if you see, uh, uh, this looks quite simple and uh, uh, it is because of the TensorFlow Lite APIs as well. Uh, so uh, I start out with loading my image uh, and then doing any kind of pre-processing on it. So uh, as of now, right now, it is just resizing the image, but you could have some more pre-processing steps as well. I then load my TensorFlow Lite model, and uh, I want to get the I want to get the predictions from a specific node uh, in the model graph, uh, which is what I'm doing over here. And uh, so the output which I get will essentially be a list of probabilities, and uh, uh, and uh, and finally, and finally the index I get uh, with the most probability. So let's say I have uh, zero or one as uh, the number with most probability. So each of them corresponds to a particular species of board. Remember the uh, remember what a task was. So each of them uh, corresponds to a particular species of board, uh, and uh, which is why I also have a label map down here. So what this label map tells it is uh, is uh, what index corresponds to what species of board. Uh, so as of right now, let's just print out our label, uh, and we'll print out our label. So this is the JavaScript code, which if you see was pretty simple, and uh, let's break this up. Uh, sorry for the background noise. And uh, so now we uh, just saw the JavaScript code. So let's give it the JS file. And uh, it should tell us. So I also had a sample image over here. Uh, that was actually Hemeris Cassini. That is a species of bird. So it actually did. Uh, so the TensorFlow model actually did predict it correctly. So that was the JavaScript example. And there is another little thing which I wanted to talk about. But I'll couple that up with the Rust example. So uh, so let, let's see the same model. And now we want to uh, see a Rust example. So uh, let's go down to the Rust. Directly. So this is called Rust Mobile Net V2, and I'll just show you this demo as well. So, so, so first of, uh, uh, so first of, we'll start off with building this, and uh, we'll do this in uh, in a similar way we did it earlier. So where did the command go? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, so, let, so let's build our, uh, so let's first uh, build this, and uh, I, I actually built it beforehand, so we don't spend a lot of time on these processes in the demo. But uh, if you see, uh. So, uh, similar to uh, what you might have seen earlier, if you remember from the JavaScript example, we go to the version 32 minus wasi target release, 
and uh, let's do an ls over here so what i have is the classified dot wasm and this is uh, and and this is the dot wasm file that i can use what i can also do is i can aot compile it down ahead of time compile this down to machine native code uh, compile it down to a dot so file the linux shared library format and uh, I, i can run that as well so uh, so remember the benchmarks from earlier and uh, so th so this is actually the model on which those benchmarks were made and uh, so at the moment uh, we'll also run this with the wasm edge minus tensorflow minus light utility but uh, uh, so but uh, with wasm edge uh, it gives you a cool utility wasm edge c which allows you to aot compile your code down very easily and get a dot so file which you can use and this also gives rise so because the dot so file is uh, machine specific this also gives rise to this also gives rise to the uh, universal wasm format that is a dot wasm file plus a dot so file at the moment uh, let's run the uh, rush code so 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 uh, i'm i'm using the same model to uh, do the inference with in rush and if you see the main dot rs uh, it is uh, the code here is pretty self explanatory as well i'm using the same model uh, the bolts model uh, and uh, uh, performing the inference on it in the exact same way as earlier what i also wanted to do was uh, uh, i'll show you how much time it takes uh, to do to do an inference so uh, so let's uh, so first let's just uh, run this so using the wasm edge minus tensorflow minus light utility like we discussed so wasm edge minus tensorflow minus light uh, now we have uh, so now we uh, give it the part to uh, the wasm file that wasm file so that is classified dot wasm and uh, we also put in an image this is the same image from earlier uh, the demo was essentially supposed to be the same model shown in javascript and rust which is what we do so this gives us output in 187 milliseconds uh, which is uh, which is a bit more for a tensorflow light model uh, particularly uh, uh, for a small model but uh, a lot of the speed of web assembly also comes from ahead of time compilation and if you remember the benchmarks we showed you earlier ahead of time compilation can uh, cut this down by 8 times to 10 times uh, which is a very big increase in speed so that is something you definitely want to try out uh, with wasm hc and uh, you can run it in the exact same way uh, so that marks our end for demo one and uh, uh, let's now go on to our second demo uh, which is uh, deploying this as a function as a service so now what we want to do is uh, we have already we have already seen uh, we have already seen how we can uh, uh, run uh, how we can run a web assembly app with wasm edge so uh, let's now try and deploy it as a function as a service so uh, we'll actually be using the uh, similar code we'll not be using the same model uh, you can also like put in the same model if you wanted to uh, we'll be using the same category of model mobilenet uh, which is actually built in the uh, exact same way you have the label map you have uh, you have the model from which you want to uh, get the outputs from so uh, let's go to the functions uh, here we have the rush code so if you see this is essentially the same rush code uh, just with a new model out there uh, and of course different pre processing steps in our earlier uh, in our earlier model uh, we wanted to convert it to uh, for the earlier model we were resizing it to 224 by 224 but of course this, any of the pre processing or post processing steps might of course differ according to uh, what model you have so uh, so with we also have the uh, hello.js and uh, the pre.sh uh, and the pre.sh file uh, and what that uh, does for us is uh, so let's just go to the pre.sh file and what that does for us is uh, uh, gets it uh, gets all the .wasm files to the .so files uh, the linux shared library format it ahead of time compiles it so we can uh, run it uh, so we can uh, run it a lot more easily so uh, so we'll take so we'll take the mobile net model and uh, as you might expect uh, we'll first go to our function which we have uh, which is image classification and let's actually bring this out so we'll first go to image classification and now we'll build this uh, similar to how we did earlier so uh, okay uh, let's build this for the please and uh, our target is uh, wasn't 32 was it? 32 minus was so uh, i had built it earlier uh, which is why it just optimized the target very quickly uh, so now we'll just prepare this uh, because we ha now have a classified dot wasm file like we did earlier in the release directory so now we'll just uh, so now we'll just put it to the uh, into the uh, root directory for the uh, function as a service application and uh, oh uh, i didn't oh, oh yes yes i want to get the dot wasm file not the whole directory so just moving the dot wasm file uh, to the root directory over here and uh, what what you can now uh, what you can now do is uh, uh or what you can now do is deploy this to wasm uh, which is the example we'll be taking a look at uh, we can deploy this to wasm uh, serverless functions so let's just do wasm deploy uh, so you already need to uh, so you already need to have uh, the wasm cli installed so uh, i'm in the wrong directory at the moment uh, what i will do is i'll go down to uh, the fast directory which is where now our classified.wasm file is uh, so 
let's now do a virtual deploy. So this is uh, actually building and then deploying it to uh, to virtual functions, uh, and we'll have our uh, function ready for deployment. So it is taking quite some time. Let's go to uh, my virtual workspace for this demo. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah view, uh, view build docs. Uh, that is what I wanted to see for the deployment. And uh, it was actually able to build it up. And if you also see that, uh, uh, so when it ran the pre.sh uh, file, it actually converted, uh, it used wasmhc. If you see, uh, it used wasmhc to ahead of time compile, uh, to ahead of time compile our, our Rush code and uh, do the inference a lot more uh, quickly. Uh, but uh, you should remember that read.so file is the machine native code, uh, which is why, uh, which is why it is only uh, useful to run on a particular machine. And uh, you can also use the universal wasm uh, format uh, to, co to couple the dot wasm file that can be run on any wasm sandbox and uh, the dot so file that is machine specific. So let's actually take a look at this deployment which we just deployed. And uh, uh, so this deployment is up as well. So let's now take a look at our wasm app. I just showed you. Uh, uh, I just showed you about the uh, why it needed to be. Uh, why it needed to be. Convert. Uh, why we converted to all the data so files. And uh, now uh, let's uh, open our deployment. Okay. Uh, there we go. So this is the deployment which we just made uh, to virtual functions. And uh, let's try on an image. So this is the ImageNet model, not the same words model. Uh, so let's try on this image. Uh, which is a pretty famous image. And uh, it actually tells me that it's a comic book. Uh, so the image net model has another set of labels, uh, which is used for uh, uh, detecting all kinds of images. Uh, it has, uh, so the image net 1K has 1,000 uh, labels and the image net 21K has 21,000 different uh, labels for images. And uh, that is the model which we deployed uh, to serverless functions. If you might see it also, uh, the inference was also quite quick uh, because we ahead of time compiled down our code and uh, it also rightly classifies this image as a comic book. So now we come to the third and final demo, which is uh, managing WebAssembly apps with Kubernetes. So, uh, so, it, so it is, uh, so it is really nice. And one of the great uh, advantages of the uh, of Linux containers or the Linux containers ecosystem is that you have a lot of tools, you have a lot of support, uh, you have Kubernetes to manage it, you have high-level container runtimes, runcy, a low-level container runtime, uh, uh, to uh, uh, which allows you to uh, work with Linux uh, Linux-based containers very easily. And uh, uh, so you can also do the same with WebAssembly-based containers. Uh, which is quite interesting because uh, WebAssembly based containers are pretty, uh, are faster at startup. And you have already seen the speed, uh, especially coupled with uh, ahead of time compilation uh, about how uh, WebAssembly, about how WebAssembly could be faster. And um, it would be really nice if you could have your uh, WebAssembly container images side by side and WebAssembly apps run side by side in the same system with Linux containers, uh, which is uh, which is what we'll be seeing today. So first off, uh, we'll so first off we'll take one of these examples and create a container for our uh, and create a create a container out of our uh, out of our wasm image, uh, out of our wasm application. So first, let's go to an example. Let's take the Rush mobile net example. And uh, uh, so we already have the wasm 32 minus wasi target installed. Uh, so first, we'll build this. Uh, we have already done this in the previous demos, but I'll just build this up again uh, for the wasm 32 minus wasi target. And uh, yeah, so because we had already built it earlier, uh, this was a lot faster. So uh, now uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll also uh, so now we want to create a Docker file, uh, which will run that dot wasm file. Uh, if you remember where the dot wasm file is, it's in the wasm32 minus wasm target release directory. So first, let's apply the executable permission to it because that is what we'll be running in the Docker. Uh, in our uh, what we'll be writing in a Docker file and what our container will be running. So uh, let's wasm32 minus wasm release, and this is called classify dot wasm. So there you go. And now what we'll do is. Uh, uh, we'll create a uh, we'll create a Docker file at uh, in the release directory. Oh. So let's create a Docker file here, and uh, we now have the Docker file up. Let's open that. So uh, I've already uh, written this down for you, but uh, uh, what you can simply do is uh, add add your .wasm file and uh, add the .wasm file. So uh, so this is very simple. Uh, 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 our, and now we'll build the container from this Docker file. Uh, so, uh, so what we'll do is, uh, so uh, the C run uh, container runtime uh, can already start the uh, this WebAssembly based container image, uh, but it requires another annotation on the container image. 
uh, to indicate that it is a WebAssembly application, which does not have a guest OS. So to do this, uh, we'll actually use build up and uh, add an annotation uh, uh, that uh, this is a WebAssembly application and we don't have a guest OS for this. So, uh, so let's actually do that. Uh, and we'll add, and we'll add our annotation. Uh, so the annotation is module dot version dot image slash variant and uh, this is just to uh, uh, this is just to let know that uh, we don't have a uh, guest OS for this uh, WebAssembly application. So classify. So this uh, so this adds the so this adds the annotation on this container image, and then you can also uh, do build, uh, and then you can also do build a push to push this to Docker Hub or to GCR, or literally wherever you want. So, uh, so that is the part about building a, a, a building a container from our WebAssembly, uh, building a container image from our WebAssembly application. And uh, what we'll do at the moment, I haven't pushed the container, uh, I haven't pushed the image I created uh, to Docker Hub. And what we'll do is we'll just take this, uh, we'll just take this uh, simple piece of code. So what this does is, uh, this is uh, actually uh, by the WASM uh, team uh, and uh, just to test out WASI extension. Uh, so this is the uh, prints a couple of random numbers, uh, creates a file, reads a file. So just to test out WASI and they already have a container up for this. So, uh, oh, so we can directly test this out. So you can actually uh, try running a WebAssembly container. Uh, or you can actually try making a WebAssembly container and running it, uh, uh, running it with, uh, with, uh, with, Cube Edge, K3S, uh, Minikube, Kind, whatever you want. Uh, at the moment, I already have a Kind cluster up, and I'll just, uh, and I'll just, uh, I'll just run an example. I'll just run this example, uh, which we just saw. They, already, uh, they also have a published image, uh, which was the reason to try out this example and show this example because it's uh, quickly doable, and uh, I haven't pushed the image uh, to Docker Hub yet. So, uh, so this is uh, an example of uh, running a WebAssembly, uh, running a WebAssembly. Uh, running WebAssembly and managing it with Kubernetes. Uh, we have actually taken, uh, taken this uh, WebAssembly app, uh, which is a very simple WebAssembly app, uh, made it into a container, added the annotation, and uh, and also uh, run, it, uh, run it on our kind Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so that was it for demo three. So I hope that you liked the demonstration. In case you are interested, you can check out the code on GitHub via this particular link that we'll also be sharing in the chat for all of you. Now we also wanted to cover slightly about why choose this balance between Kubernetes and Wasmetch. Now developers can actually use various uh, container tools, uh, such as Kubernetes, to actually run lightweight WebAssembly applications. And you may ask that why to actually choose WebAssembly-based applications on Kubernetes? So especially when it comes to uh, being able to run uh, applications on the edge, which are usually uh, those kind of hardware, which are very resource constrained. If you try to run um, Linux containers on its devices, it can be sort of an issue because Linux containers are usually larger in size and they also take a lot of time to actually uh, get started. Now, in comparison to those, when we use WebAssembly containers, they are much faster to not only invoke, but also they are much smaller in size up to hundreds of times uh, in a lot of different situations. And at the same time, uh, a good method to actually run uh, these WebAssembly containers on Kubernetes is by actually pairing them up with some of the existing Linux containers, uh, especially like Docker containers that might be running within that particular WebAssembly, uh, within that Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, because as we know that uh, with WebAssembly, uh, it is not having the best tooling out there. Uh, a lot of the toolings are not supported. So essentially what you can do is that you can run the, uh, your WebAssembly containers alongside Docker containers and use the rich ecosystem that is provided by the Docker, uh, Docker uh, uh, containers with the tool chains that can be used also by the uh, WebAssembly uh, containers as well with the help of WASI. And uh, that actually makes WebAssembly as a really good choice for a uh, communities based ecosystem. With that, uh, we'll conclude our talk. Thank you so much. Uh, of course, you can reach out to us via our Twitter handles, uh, me, Shivai, at the rate, how develop, and Rishit, at the rate, Rishit Dagli. So thank you so much for attending the talk. And of course, now we are open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. That was an interesting session. We'll now bring uh, Shivai and Rishit online to answer your questions. Hi, welcome, Shivya Arshit. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Booker, uh, we can uh, hear you. 
first of all thank you so much for inviting us for kisri and uh, we have been watching some of the other talks as well so yeah thank you so much for inviting us all yeah awesome yeah. we are very grateful for you taking the time to join and prepare the video though we don't have any question here at the moment uh uh, I think um, since we will probably also be uploading the questions later to be on YouTube, we'll share the videos with you so that you can uh, probably check the feedbacks that people are giving and so on. And uh, also viewers can also throw questions at you on Twitter. I think uh, Rashid's handle is Rashid underscore Dagli on Twitter. And uh, that of Shivya, I can't remember yours. Maybe we can... How how develop but yeah just to sort of cover uh, in a shell what we like you know wanted to represent from our talk is uh, that a lot of times you might want to run uh, machine learning applications and also in general any computationally heavy applications on edge devices and that's where WebAssembly really comes to the picture because generally WebAssembly is conceived to be this front end and a browser specific technology but today it has been brought over and it's uh, actually being used quite a lot in uh, the back end and especially in the uh, cloud native space as well. So that was, uh, I want to convey that message, of course, by taking an example of machine learning in our talk. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Rishit, you want to add anything else? Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, no, but uh, uh, not on the highlight part, but uh, another, in, another thing which I found particularly interesting with uh, WebAssembly is that uh, you can shift the paradigm because of the speed and the size of it, the size of it compared to Linux containers. And we also showed the benchmarks for the uh, mobile net v2 demo. So that was actually the same model we were running in the demo. We did all kinds of benchmarks on it. So uh, that, in a sense, uh, feels to me uh, managing your uh, WebAssembly containers with Linux uh, could change the paradigm for a lot of uh, for a lot of tasks and uh, you should definitely give it a try all of the demos are already open sourced uh, some of them are the example demos uh, uh, from the uh, maintained by the wasm edge team uh, but uh, a lot of the demos like the mobile net v21 which we saw today uh, were new models so you can definitely try them out uh, we also have a github repo uh, where all the demos are you can take a look at them in Right. Thank you so much, uh, Abu Bakr, and the entire uh, KCD Africa team. And thank you so much, Anita, for uh, having us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Abu, I think you're muted. Oh, I, and I was busy talking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. I, I, I was just thanking you all for joining, and uh, we look forward to hosting you in our subsequent talks and uh, engaging with you online. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.